Okay, now that we have our refined sketch, I'll save that into my folder. That refined sketch is our plan. It's the blueprint for building our landscape. And so I'm going to open up PhotoP, and I'm going to work right on top of that sketch. But before I start bringing in my references that are like my magazine cutouts, I need to make sure this is the right resolution, the right pixel size, so that all these nice high resolution references I, I found, remember if I view them at, at full size, they're going to be way bigger than the screen because these are sometimes 4,000 by 6,000 pixels. And even if they're just 1,000 by 1,000 pixels, that's going to fill your screen. But we need that, that level of, of detail and quality for printing these. So if I brought that in right now, it will squeeze itself and shrink itself to fit that pixel resolution. But look at all that detail I lose. So that's not what you want to do. Instead, you want to take your sketch and you want to bring it into the computer. And then you want to crop it. So what we're going to do is click on our move tool in PhotoP, which is the top tool. And then we're going to click on our rulers. And if you're not seeing your rulers, just hit Command R and you'll see your rulers. Click on it to make guides and then bring guides all the way around your sketch, framing it into a rectangle. I'm not great at drawing perfect rectangles when I do these thumbnail sketches. And you don't need to be. But you do need to pick a very precise pixel dimension. So how can you get your, your drawn sketch into the computer? Well, I have an Android phone that's, I think, around nine years old. It can't actually call anyone anymore. It does all the other things a phone's supposed to do. And I just take a picture with it, and then I put it to Google Photos, and then I'm able to access Google Photos. It's basically the same as emailing it to myself, right? So whatever process you have to get the photo onto your computer, you, you need that. Okay, then you're going to crop. So the crop tool is the fifth tool down, and I'm going to just crop right to my guides. It will stick to my guides. And while I use the crop, it's handy because it will tell you your pixel dimension. So right now, my pixels for what I'm cropping is only 505 by 313 pixels. That's not a lot. That's not enough. But that's okay because this is my sketch. Once I've cropped it and I know the actual height and width proportion rectangle of my landscape, now I can create the pixel grid I want. So I go to image, image size, and I'm going to change it from 505 by 313 pixels. I'm going to change it to inches, and I need it to be at least 8 by 10 inches. So if I do 10 there, that's not even big enough, 6 by 10. If I do 8 here, that's big enough, 8 by 12. But maybe I want to be a little bit more ambitious and make it bigger than 8 by 10. So I'm going to make it, instead of 8, I'm going to make it 11. So this is going to be 11 by 17. And then the other thing you need to do in image size is the resolution. 72 is screen resolution. 300 is print resolution. So I want this to be at least 300 pixels per inch. And I'm going to actually do 350. And that will allow me to print this at the largest possible size in the lab if I want to, up to 16 by 20 inches. Now, that just created a ton of pixels, so it softened out my lines. But this is just my sketch, so that's fine. Now, I want to create a working space around my sketch where I can bring my my reference images on and cut them out and then move them on top of my sketch and size them and place them. So I'm going to go not to image size, I'm going to go to canvas size. So I go to image, canvas size, and I'm going to change it to inches. And I'm going to make this 40 inches wide by 30 inches tall. That's something we're going to use for the first few assignments. 30 by 40 inches is the largest paper size that a professional four color offset lithography press can take. So if you're creating things professionally for professional printing, this could be movie posters, this could be bus campaigns, this could be billboards. 
the largest you can print is 30 by 40 inches. So if you have a, a project that's bigger than that, like the side of a skyscraper, you need to tile it up with 30 by 40 inch files, right? So 30 by 40 inches by at least 300 pixels per inch is the largest kind of single raster image you usually would ever have to design. Now we are not going to fill up all 30 by 40 inches. We're just filling up what my guides are showing, what my sketch is covering. But I'm using that space to organize. And if I want to clean it up in a way that's kind of nice to my eyes, I'm going to use my rectangular marquee selection tool, which is underneath the move tool. And I'm going to click inside my guides. So I'm selecting my sketch. And I'm going to hit Command J, our command of the day, to duplicate just that cutout onto a new layer. Then I'm going to take that background layer and I'm going to say edit fill with gray. This is perfect 50% gray. And that's like my desk. So I have the thing I'm working on, my desktop. I'm going to turn off my guides now. They're still there, but I'm going to just hide them. You can find this under view and show and guides, and it's just command semicolon. Same in Photoshop. So command semicolon will toggle on and off your guides. They come in handy later. And now I have multiple layers. And I can bring on what is my furthest background layer. For right now, that's just this one, my purple. So I drag and drop it in. It's already big enough, but if it's too small or too big, I can kind of shrink it and resize it before I place it, right? But I'll keep it that size and I'll just hit return. And that comes in as what's called a smart object, right? We're used to those. Before I do anything else, I want to say file, save as PSD, because these are now pretty large pixel files. These are around 400 megabytes now, you know, because 30 by 40 inches at 300 or 350 pixels that's almost half a gig of memory just in one layer so i'm going to name it with my name and then a description so i'm going to say assignment one and i am doing a surreal grotto save to the desktop i do that so i can see that it saves there it is didn't take that long going to mark it with green and then I can check it just by right clicking and saying get info and right now that's not too bad it's 209 megabytes but it's only going to get bigger all right the next element I want to bring in I have them all colored right are all the the orange element that's my middle ground so I'm going to drag and drop that in if it comes in and it's way too small then you don't have enough resolution on that resource. So you might try to find another one. If it comes in and it's way too big, that's no problem at all. That just means it's really, really high resolution. So then I can kind of shrink that down to something a little bit more to what I'm thinking I need. And then I hit return to place it. And they're still smart objects, so I'm not losing any quality, even if I resize them later. I'm just curious how big this actually is. So I'm going to go to View, Actual Size. Yeah, that's a big, big file. And you can see how it's a little bit blurrier here, and it gets really sharp and in focus here in the middle ground. And then this background is just this light pouring in. So that could work well with my Oculus kind of combine those two. It even has what's suggestive of a foreground right here, but I'm going to add to that with my own. All right, and now I need my foreground elements. So let's see, I got this guy, this big column on the side. Important, just like I don't want you to fill up a sketchbook with your sketch, I don't want you to fill up your 30 by 40 inches with your reference. That doesn't do anyone any good. That just blurs out your reference. Instead, you're scaling your reference to fit right onto where you want it in your sketch. 
right? Maybe a tiny bit bigger, but... And then you're just pushing it off to the side on your desk. The next foreground one was this guy. These rocks, which I'll cut out and use. They're not that big, but they work for my foreground. I'm going to kind of flip them like this. Maybe I'll flip them horizontally. All those transform functions we have using Option Command T. Flip that off to the side. Hit Return. And then the last one of my five is this. For this kind of chunk of rock here. Also going to flip that horizontally. And it's already about the right size. Place it. And now, you see how it's green here and I'm seeing my assignment? I'm just going to say File, Save, or I can do Command S. Now that green is going to go away and it's going to update the assignment. And because I've added all these smart layers now, Oh, the green didn't go away. Interesting. I thought it would. Uh, if I say get info, now it is 643 megabytes, right? So it's three times bigger than it was before. So these smart objects add a lot because these smart object layers, these, they are referencing these original files. All right, I've saved it. Think of these as pages you've torn out of the magazines. And now we need to start playing with them, placing them on top of each other. So I start with my background layer, and I'm just using the auto select layer function of the move tool. So I can just click on it and it will automatically select it. And I'm going to layer that into my image. And a way to help me with that is to take the opacity on it down. And then to use option command T to free transform it. But I have to make sure I'm on the right layer. There it is. So select the layer, Option Command T, you'll get a transform box. And then I can hold down Shift and I can stretch this to fit to my sketch in a way that I like. I can right click and I can do things like distort. If I want the Oculus to be a little bit higher, I can stretch it so it is. Because we'd start with a landscape because it's very forgiving. Man-made structures are not super forgiving for warping and stretching and distorting. But rock formations, trees, mountains, clouds, incredibly forgiving. I could even, with this, warp it a little bit and just push the bottom of that oculus so it's exactly what I wanted in my sketch. And I can even stretch it out on the edges here. But I think that's going to work. So this background, notice that I was able to fully transform it and still leave it as a smart object. That's because your background reference layer is the only one you're not going to cut out from. So if you think of your, your vector exercise, your emoji, you had a background shape and everything got layered on top of it. This is your background shape. Everything else needs to get cut out and placed on top of it. So I'm going to leave that as it is, and I'm going to leave it at a low opacity so I can see my sketch. My next is this middle ground. And this one's pretty darn important to my composition. And so I want that column in there, and then I want all of this, this cool water. But I don't need all of it. In fact, I just need this chunk. So I, I select on the smart object. It's already about the right size. And now I'm going to use my lasso tool. And I am going to just grab what I think I can use by lassoing around it. Okay, I am not going to erase anything from this. I'm not going to take the time to rasterize this. Instead, all I'm going to do is the command of the day, which is command J. And that will copy that selection onto a new layer on top. 